Welcome to this tutorial on how to program the NRF51 Bluetooth Low Energy Device from Nordic Semiconductor. In this screencast we'll cover setting up a virtual machine that will host the development environment enabling you to compile, link and deploy programs to different development boards embedding the NRF51. We will also show you how to use the debugger to step through source code as it's running on the device. Let's start by looking at the different devices that we're about to program. The first is the dongle version, small enough to be worn but without a built-in battery connector. It has an onboard multicolored LED and six general purpose input-output pins that facilitate digital and analog communications to and from the board. It's perfect for use while developing solutions as it's small and connects directly to a USB port for power and communications. We'll also look at the full-size development board version. It has an on-off switch, four LEDs, four buttons and multiple GPIOs. It's perfect for use while developing solutions that need to communicate with off-board peripherals such as analog and digital sensors. As with most embedded projects, one has to cross-compile. That means that we use one machine to develop binaries to be used on the target machine. This is due to the fact that the target machines are constrained in resources and seldom have the ability to host development tools. An exception to this would be the Raspberry Pi, which can run Linux for example, but is still much slower than your workstation. The development cycle has an additional step of transferring the application, otherwise known as flashing, to the target device. We'll use a VM to host all our development in order to separate our regular tools from those needed for NRF51 development. The screen capture that you're currently seeing shows the output of the Ansible script that is provisioning and setting up our Ubuntu VM to include the NRF SDK, the cross-compiler toolchain, Git and OS specific modules for Bluetooth application development in general. Please see the reference section at the end of this screencast to learn more about the Ansible setup project on GitHub. Our example is a simple program that initializes the available LEDs on the board and proceeds to go into an infinite loop, alternating between the LEDs themselves and their state. It shows how to initialize the hardware and access the LEDs through the GPIO pins. Now that we have the VM up and running, we will log on to it and download the example Blinky program from GitHub to the projects directory. Since everything has been set up in the previous step, all that's needed after downloading is to issue the make command. Flashing is accomplished using a program called JLink Exe that was installed on the VM when we set it up. The parameter file that it uses when running will first erase the contents of the flash memory on the device, then load the Nordic soft device, and then our application. The soft device is a layer of the SDK that Nordic supplies that enables all operations on the device. In this instance, we needed to access the LEDs. We then insert the board into the USB connector and issue the JLink exe command. The board will automatically launch the program once the flash process completes. Debugging is somewhat challenging without an IDE, so we'll go through the steps here using two terminal windows, one for the debugger server and one for the debugger itself. With the dongle inserted, open a terminal window and start the debugging server using the command below. It will start, wait for commands coming from port 2331 and relay them to the board. In another terminal window, change to the underlying build directory and run the debugger as seen below. When you get the debugger's prompt, tell the debugger to connect to the server using the command you see below. Now load the executable to be traced using the file command as seen below. Use the list command to see the source code. We'll now set a breakpoint using the br command as seen below. We'll break at the point where we wait before changing LEDs and colors on line 44. 
Type continue to start the debugging session and either type C or enter to repeat iterating and breaking on that line. You can see the board react as you step through the code. The first place to start is Nordic's website. It describes the hardware, soft device and SDK components needed to program their devices. I have published two repositories on GitHub to help you get started with your development environment. One will set up an Ubuntu VM that runs under VirtualBox or Parallels, although I suggest that you use the Parallels version as it supports easy access to the host's USB ports that is needed for flashing. The other installs the needed tools if you're using Mac OS X and don't want to work with the VM. The code for Blinky, as seen in this screencast, can be found in this repository. There you will also find support for CMake-based IDEs such as CLion. Last but not least is a project called Fruity Mesh that implements a BLE mesh network between Nordic devices. It's worth looking into this project to learn about mesh networks and to understand the workings of Bluetooth protocols and the NRA51 SDK. We're at the end of this quick introduction to NRA51 programming basics. Thank you for watching, and don't hesitate to contact me with comments and questions. Happy hacking!